Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Starbase. Hope you guys are doing very well today. And um, still, this is not long after the previous episode for you guys. Uh, this episode is not that long in between. Um, we just did the thrusters here at the back and I'm very, very happy with the speeds. There is something I want to address quickly that in between episodes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double up on these side thrusters over here uh, for the little bit of pushing power um, because I've noticed that we are with anything in like making rockets. So those who play Kerbal Space Program will know um, the more rockets and fuel you bring along doesn't necessarily translate to more powerful, you know, thrust the weight and all that. Sometimes you actually get a deficit, meaning um, you have to hold a lot of more weight with you. And yes, we did increase our power outage or our um, speed tremendously with just those thrusters, but those are extra weight. And um, I was doing like a normal run, a uh, quick mining run with the normal uh, mining ship, the other one, of the version one of this one. And I noticed it was a bit sluggish and whatnot with a bit of um, ore in it, which for some reason didn't really transfer properly. Like I would, I, I remember the previous time before today, I came back from a mining trip and I transferred all my ore and logged off for the day and whatnot and then today i logged back in i spawned in the ship and i flew off into the distance and um, i was like wow the ship is really slow compared to this one and then i looked into the ore crates and it's just like ah there's still ore in them i thought i'd transfer them out but no alas it's not the case um but um i did notice that if we if i was full of charodium 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 uh, the the red rock <laughs> Um, that this ship is a bit sluggish on going left to right, right to left and all that. Um, and I was thinking of either doubling up on these, like uh, maybe adding another box thruster on this side, you know, two buddies over here, same with these guys, all the side thrusters, the side maneuvers, I would say, maneuver thrusters, um, although these aren't, these are box thrusters. Maneuver thrusters are different things. Um, but like like I said, I will might double up on these, just because today we are going to work on an asteroid avoidance system uh, and what that incorporates us is like if there's an asteroid in our way the ship will automatically try to avoid it that's the whole system and uh i'm trying to remember the guy's name i think it's puny or something uh just watched the video oh, my goodness i have such a short term memory i do apologize um i did watch somebody's video uh it's very very easy to program and all that i think the only labor intensive thing is to add all of the range finders especially on a ship like this i can't imagine a ship much bigger than this one to add all of those range finders but still um what i was thinking is we're gonna do that and the the ship relies on those thrusters the side thrusters um to maneuver around and all that and um, as I was flying the version one of this ship, it had a bit of trouble, you know, pushing itself side to side up and down. And uh, that's not that's no bueno. That's not that's not going to work at all. So um, I was thinking of maybe doing something to uh, help the ship a little. Maybe. And this is a big maybe. Is to have a bunch of thrusters lined up on this side. Um, some pointing up, some pointing down, some pointing to the side, just to help with the um, uh, pushing power um, maneuvering for the ship. And yeah, that's that's my whole thing. What I will do is is um, we we're gonna develop the system first, okay? We're going to add the range finders and do the all code and all that kind of stuffs. Um, I will show you guys how the code looks like, how this thing works in real time. You know, let's put a light on. I can't see anything. And um, Man, I really wish this place had, like, freaking spotlights. Maybe working lights, you know? We're, we're, like, robots, space, and all that. We have lamps. Come on. <laughs> Developers have not yet researched that in the tech tree. They don't have lamps yet. <laughs> um, but they bypassed everything and made a whole station. Anyways, um, so, yeah. We're, first, we're going to do the systems and whatnot. And then, after, in between episodes, I will try to add uh, just normal thrusters just like these box ones in between episodes see if that works 
you know, we're going to make the ship very heavy and see how the avoidance, how quickly it can avoid. Um, or I'm basically just judging it from a standing still point of view, how quickly it can move side to side. I might go ahead and add um, a couple of extra thrusters here on the sides uh, just to give it that little pushing power. But anyway, guys, let me get to work adding those rangefinders and writing the YOLO code and we'll be right back. And welcome back. So, um, it has actually been a day between the first part of this video and today's, uh, or this part, um, the second part of this video. Um, it was supposed to be an easy system, okay? It is just slap on a couple of rangefinders, just add, throw in the uh, your old code, and it should have worked. Now, the, well, something else came out, but I want to give a big shout out to uh, Spoonie Bard. He is, like, when I typed in Starbase asteroid avoidance system his video popped up and i want to give you guys like a if you guys need some good yolo tricks um and things you know anything related in that way uh i would recommend you guys to go check him out um big shout out to him for bringing this to my attention now this is the thing um <laughs> there we go <laughs> so um a couple of things first of all these rangefinders um okay let me just quickly go over how they work and um the yaw code and then i'm just quickly going to explain something else another issue i ran into um okay so we have if you're going to do a, a asteroid avoidance system okay uh let's take this rangefinder up here this left one this right one and this bottom one if you're going to have a small ship i mean about this size like uh between these four, four thrusters. If you have a, a ship this size, I would say you would at least need a configuration uh, of at least four to five um, rangefinders. Um, I mean, or just keep it at four. So what it does is if the top rangefinders are on, well, all of them will be on. If the top one is broken, like uh, if the, the rangefinders um, search beam gets broken, um, then the ship will force itself downwards same thing with the bottom the range finders if something breaks it it will push the ship upwards same thing on the left same thing on the right and um if you have a small ship and whatnot it's very easy to do this because you're just going to need the four but uh, for larger ship than this you're going to need a lot more as like over here now this isn't a particularly like gigantic ship we, we like i've seen bigger than this but um because of its shape, it's really weird, weird to figure out like what will be top and what will be left, you know? So let's say for instance, what will this one be? You know, will it be top one because it's on the top row or will it be on the left one because it's on the left hand side? You guys see what I mean? But like I sat with a little bit of a dilemma. Um, but what I've done is um, these four on the left, uh, these four and the next row four rangefinders i um designated to be the left hand side okay then starting from this one and this this rangefinder and this rangefinder all the way to these four i've designated the these rangefinders to be my top variants um same goes for the bottom same goes for the right so just to you know divide it up equally along the way the middle rangefinder is not for avoidance. It is for the approach system that I wrote. Um, I still need to... I think we will do that as another video at some point. Um, just do so, a couple of tweaks, like safety buttons and all that kind of stuff, just to, you know... But other than that... Um, now, let's say you have your rangefinders placed um, like this, you know, just a hard point rangefinder. And at the rangefinder, you... Um, all of them, all of the rangefinders... If you just have four or if you, if you have 40 these are 40 range finders if you have four to 40 make sure the top name is aas okay for asteroid avoidance system um and then if your range finders on the left hand side you're gonna at the bottom over here you'll say aasl for uh, asteroid avoidance system left if you if you're gonna use the top one you will say aast which is asteroid avoidance system top. Same thing with the bottom, which will be AASB, and then AASR for the right-hand side. So once you have those, um, those will be the 
I think the range finder, so the top one is uh, range, uh, the middle one is the range finder search length. Just make sure it's a thousand. And the bottom one, I think, is range finder distance. That is just a normal number that will be read back to you. That's just something you can grab. This range finder over here, this middle one, which I use for my approach system, it is the uh, range finder distance. I uh, just named it front range finder distance. But it just reads back the distance to you. So the YOLO code depends on literally actually on the this bottom uh, part the whole time. It was trying to read back. Because you need, you know, you know, it like the rangefinder needs to be updated constantly as you're traveling. Because if there's an asteroid uh, in front of you and you're traveling 150 meters a second, you want to make sure you're you're like alerted very quickly. Okay, like uh, you, you're you're on top of it, or the system should be. Um, now for the code, it's a very very simple code. I would have done something completely different because I like, I like to think sideways. <laughs> um, if we go over here, um, if AAS is equal to one, so that means if it's on. Remember in the YOLO tutorial we did? Um, let's just take this one for instance. AAS is zero. We have a button over here, which is renamed AAS, and the bottom button style is one. On value, value is on, uh, is one, and off value is zero. So if you press that button, that means this thing switches on, okay? It changes this value to one, meaning all these will switch on because they all share the same name. The only difference will be the obviously the the bottom part, okay? So you guys can just rewatch this video just to if you miss something or go to uh, Spoonie Bard, his channel. Um, he has a, a little bit of more in-depth video. I'm just trying to explain here quickly just to save a bit of time. Um, so over here in the script, if that button is on, then we go to line two. The line two says like if the let's say for instance the AAST, the top ones, are less than a thousand. So if that number is being read back from a less than one thousand, the FCU up and the FC, uh, FCU up down, which is actually the throttles, these two. Okay. Uh, remember when we did the YOLO code where, or the YOLO tutorial where we talked about um, chain reactions, where this but like we press this button, something happens over here. This YOLO code does something, and that influences this. That's basically like a whole chain effect I was talking about. Um, so basically what this uh, script is saying is if the rangefinder up there, okay, the top ones, AAST, is, uh, reads back a number less than a thousand, then FCU up down, which is in the negative. Okay, I uh, just want to make sure this one. Um, FCU up down, that number becomes negative. When, how these levers work, remember they are in the center, okay? And if it goes in the negative, that means the ship will go down. Remember, negative means down. Okay? Maximum is positive. So if um, the bottom range finders is going to be on the same here. If the bottom range finders, uh, the beams read back less than a thousand, then the FCU up down gets a positive. That means just a um, eight zero. I mean, you could make it 50, but I'm compensating for weight over here, so I made it 80. Um, then you don't have that minus or negative in front of the 80. You have nothing. You just write 80 and then end. Um, that means this lever, the uh, FCU up down over here, will become 80. That means this, uh, the ship will go upwards because it's in the positives. Same thing for um, left and right. If we look over here, ASSL, A -A 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 -S -S, lol. Um, the left hand side gets a minus 80. Now this is where it sort of gets inverted, but I mean, if you just write this code down, then it should work. You just need these two levers as well. Um, in front of your ship, left hand side, okay? Not facing the same direction as your ship. Okay, not, not this way. Okay, look towards your ship then this part is your left, okay? Then in this code, over here, that uh, that influences the left, that means that, that says, um, then if you write left, gets the value of negative 80. That means the ship will now uh, move to the left. If we look uh, in the same direction as the ship, 
it will move towards the left. Okay, so that's how that whole code works. Um, you know, you guys can pause the video, write this down somewhere, um, and then just make sure you have a bunch of range finders, top, bottom, left, right, um, and try to divide them up all into equals and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, so my one problem I had during this whole time, I was trying to figure out there's no real information anywhere which indicates the actual size of a small asteroid. Because if you go out to the asteroid belt, the small asteroids there, I, I think those are the smallest ones you'll get. And the further you out go, going away from the safe zone, um, the asteroids will get bigger and bigger. So I wanted the smallest asteroid I could find and have its size that can be still be captured, you know, um, will still influence, will break the beam of these range finders. Um, I just wanted the spacing correct for all of these. So if you guys were wondering, where's my asset browser? If you guys were wondering um, what is the, like what I've come up with, I took the Mark I version of the ship. I went to the asteroid belt, literally parked an asteroid right here between these thrusters. Okay, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, literally parked it here, and I noticed that the asteroid is about this size. A small one is about this size. Not the, there is a, a, like a skinny but long one. There's a second one that is a little bit more clumped up, more concentrated, which looks a little bit smaller to me. So I took that one as a, an idea um, or as an example. So I parked one of those literally up close, like I, like I, I bumped into it, okay? Um, but very gently. And then I st stood here behind and I took pictures um, or screenshot it just to get an idea how big it is. So if you guys wanted to know how far you want to space these at least out of each other's way, now this is just out of my testing I've done. We go to straight beams, 192 centimeters, okay? Take one of those. And then a 24 centimeter. One of those. That is about the space. So it is 24 plus 192. That's how long um, the space between the hard points should be. Okay. That's uh, as far as I noticed. Um, but as soon as just one beam gets broken by uh, an asteroid, that's fine. I just try to compensate for it if, if there's like that fringe event if something is a bit too small um that my rangefinders will still catch it there was no other information of how far you should uh have these rangefinders i just I had to go out and test on my own now lastly we want to probably see how this thing works right right um, enough babbling show us the pretty lights <laughs> all right so we have our aas button over here which looks really cool okay so they are all on if I break the top one now, the ship will try to move out of the way going downwards, right? If we go down to the bottom one and break that, there we go. The ship will go upwards. And if you try to break a right hand one, come on, there we go. And then a left one. As you guys can see, the it works. Easy as that. I thought it was going to be a very complicated system. Like, a, a, as complicated as an ISAN. ISAN system. But yeah, whoop, get into the ship. And I just love the speed of this thing. Holy crap. There we go. All right. Um, and I think that is it for me, people. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just trying to think what should be the next episode. Um, I will see what I can do for another episode or whatnot. Uh, this ship is near, nearly done with all of the um, minor tweaks and upgrades and all those things. Um, I think the next thing should maybe be plating or something. Uh, I don't know. I will see what we will do there might be one or two more things there is still the tweaking of the yolo code which i need to work on and i will probably do that with you guys 
But uh, anyways, people, thanks so much for joining me here on Starbase. Hope you guys did enjoy. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.